just again, uh, really to in conclusion, just uh, examples of Josephus presenting Asada or Herod, biblical accounts. Um, in summary, just how does he present those? And again, I think as you had mentioned, some of those accounts are really um, some of the only historical accounts that we have about events like Masada. Sure. So the um, story of Masada, as Josephus tells us, in some ways is corroborated by the archaeological finds that have turned up. Certainly the archaeologists who excavated Masada, um, Israeli general Yigal Yadin, who's also an outstanding archaeologist, thought that archaeology corroborated the events described in Josephus, the story that's described in Josephus. You have the members of the Sicarii who had um, occupied the old fortress palace of Josephus named Masada and were there for a long time during the war. After the destruction of the Second Temple, the Romans lay siege to Masada, basically the final outpost of the Jews. And um, in 73 CE, they basically succeed in overcoming Masada. And the story that Josephus tells is of this suicide pact, interestingly um, echoes in many ways the suicide pact that I referred to earlier, um, in which Josephus participated. And the really important part about Josephus's account of the Masada is the speech that precedes the actual commission of suicide. It's a speech that is delivered by the rebel leader Elazar ben Yair, in which Elazar ben Yair actually tries to convince the Jews who are there to commit suicide. They participate in the suicide pact. Again, I'm drawing lots along the lines of uh, the way that Josephus describes his own pact. And uh, when the Romans ascend to Masada, they discover that everyone has been killed. Josephus says that he heard about the events from a couple of people that had survived, that had hidden, that hadn't participated in this pact. But it's very likely that what Josephus is doing is he's putting words into the mouth of Elazar ben Yair, trying to characterize the rebels not as heroes um, so much as people who've been punished by God for the role that they played in the rebellion. Again, Josephus is condemning the rebellion, and this is sort of the need to commit suicide for Josephus, who regards suicide as a sin, as sort of divine providence in its final iteration during the course of the war. Um, that, that's sort of the story that, uh, that Josephus tells of, uh, tells of Masada. Uh, did you, I'm sorry, did you ask about another story? In, in uh, well, no, just again, other accounts, but Masada, that, that, that's fine. I think you mentioned before about Herod and, and some of the biblical accounts that he kind of goes through in, in some of his uh, earlier works. Right. Yeah. Josephus talks about Herod in a couple of his uh, couple of works, both in war and in antiquities. He actually presents Herod in slightly different ways in each of them. You know, we, we imagine Herod as this cruel, impious stooge of the Romans. It's actually more complicated than that. In Jewish war, he actually paints Herod in very positive terms as a public figure, paints him in very dark terms as a private figure. Um, but he describes him as basically courageous, as pro-Roman, as representing everything that is good about the Jews in war. Um, in antiquities, he paints him in much darker terms. Even in his public face, he describes him as impious, as betraying uh, Roman value, as betraying Jewish values. And each of these portraits of Herod is really consistent with the story that he's trying to tell in both Jewish war and antiquities. And Herod plays an important role precisely because he figures prominently in advancing Herod's, uh, in advancing Josephus's agenda in each of those works. Okay. Uh, this has been fascinating. We, we could go on and on. This is really just the, the, the tip of the iceberg um, on, on Josephus and the period and, and urge all our listeners and viewers to um, purchase um, Professor Mermelstein's books. I, I think someone had told me that some of the classes on the subjects can be audited um, by outsiders. Yes, this is true. Yes, our the the course that I taught on Josephus can be audited. Um, our graduate courses at Yeshiva University and the Rebel Graduate School of Jewish Studies are are mostly um, mostly uh, being given either on Zoom or, or in hybrid form, okay. available to to be audited. Um, that's my my plug for Yeshiva University. Absolutely, absolutely. Urge all our listeners and viewers to take advantage of that. And again, uh, Professor Rosie, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it very much. Sure. Thanks for having me, Ari.